All right, we are going to continue working on our character here, the super aware kit. The last things we were doing was connecting all of the highlights here. So now we want to bring up the character and we're going to start adding these details, the emblem on the chest and the stripes around the sleeves and around the neck here. We last we were working on this, we changed the layout of the legs so that we will be able to cause the legs to interact with each other properly as we desire by moving things around during animation with using animated layer sort. And so we're gonna do the same thing we did on the legs with the arms here so that we can uh, have the arms interact in much the same manner as the legs do. So what we need to do is go into each part here. We'll just go ahead and just put the left indicator at the front of each of these parts here. And the left forearm patch already has the correct name. And then on these, we're just gonna use the right indicator. And then we're going to put them all in the same group now, if you remember on the legs, I ended up putting everything in the reversed group. So this time, let's try to get them all in the same. So let's take a look at the forearm here. And what we want to do is look at our or, uh, origin indicator, which you can see here at the top of the head. And you can see that it's pointing up and to the left, whereas that indicates that this is a reverse of an original, which if we go to the left forearm, you can see that it is pointing to the right and up. When you create a new layer, it is pointing to the right and up. And so we're now in layer five, and you can see it started the origin in that same spot, but it's pointing to the right and up. So that tells you whether you're using a reversed version of a part you may have duplicated. So we want to move the right hand parts into the left hand group or the for the left arm which will be renamed to arms and we'll do that here now. So we go arms and now they're all in the same place and as you can see they flipped over to where they belong or where they were uh, drawn originally. So now we need to go on to each of them and reverse them, but not by the bone. We want to do it by the object. So we're going to make sure we're in the draw controls and we select the transform points and then we can select the entire part and now we reverse it and move it on over. So just like that. And you can see it's already bound to that bone. We just think need to make sure we get it in the right spot for rotating. So there we go. And then we're gonna to go to the biceps and do the same thing. We select the biceps and we reverse it and then move it over into place. Again, we're concerned about the elbow being in the right rotation. So there is that. And then the hand, of course, needs to be brought over as well. And for the hand, we need to select the layer because it is a complex object. It's not just a single layer. It's got a number of layers inside of it. So we need to swap it around by the layer and then put it into place. And again, we want really to make sure we're getting the right rotation. So we want the center of that circle right at the center of that bone. Let's hide the forearm for the moment. 
Yeah, see, we're definitely not in the center of that circle. That's the problem. So let's grab that layer for the hand. Circles should be about right there for center. There we go. So now we can bring the forearm back. And yeah, yeah it's, that's what we want. We need to make the wrist on the forearm a little bit bigger. And let's see, looks like the elbow worked out. We're rotating properly there. And the shoulder. Let's get rid of this right arm object. And then we can drop the arms down into a single group and then move them over the shirt, over the shoulder group. There we go. So now the hands end up in front of the body, just like that. So right now, I've got the points assigned to three different bones. So. The sleeve is mainly moving with the arm here, but I wanted to keep this line at the armpit area and keep this one moving with the shoulder. And so I assigned those bones to move the clothing like that. But as you can see right here, the arm is peeking through. And of course, anything this direction, we're gonna lose that. But if we instead, Let's release the layers and points and let's just assign the whole layer to the uh, bicep bone and then rotate it and that that works all right but of course we're going to need to clean up the rounds to make it rotate properly and I think we can use a patch to hide any lines that we may get out of place so Let's go ahead and restore the visual of this arm part right here. And for now, let's get rid of the hair. So it's the back hair and the front hair. So now we're working on just the body and the shoulders here. We need to make a circle. So we're gonna go to styles and choose our circle style. And we're going to draw a circle. We're going to hold shift to make a perfect circle. And we don't want to go much larger than what we need to here. So let's now put that circle in the proper place. And we can always enlarge the circle after we've got it set for position. Using Alt, it will hold its position while still growing or shrinking as we need. Let's get this right at the tip of that bone as close as we can. There we go. Here's where we have to leave the drawing of the artist to make our puppet. I apologize to the artist. He's done a great job, but we need to make this a functional two-dimensional puppet. We're going to grab the circle and holding the Alt key, we can grab a corner and enlarge it. We'll bring it right to there. So now we're gonna match the shoulder to this circle for its uh, structure. So hit T, grab a point, hit C for curve, and we can bring this curve around the circle. Now we don't have to be exactly on the circle as long as the part that's rotating is bigger than the base part. Now we're going to go to the base part which is the shoulders and now we'll match our points with hitting T on the keyboard and grabbing a single point. We can now match this circle and we want to be as close as possible. So let's reduce this sharp curve here on the shoulder and bring this one to here hit C for curve and now we can adjust it just the way we want follow that curve 
We're going to add a point right here. We can bring this down to there and then hit C and we're just going to bring the using alt so we're not affecting the other curvatures we've already got. We can bring this out to match the circle. So there we go. All right, so now we can remove the circle. So we hit T, grab the edge, hit delete. And now we're going to create a patch for that. Let's see, we want the shoulders, we're going to rename that to shirt top. And we're going to move that inside of the arms group. So now the shirt top is on top of everything else here. And where's the shirt bottom? Here's the shirt bottom. Let's change the name to bottom. Now we've got our shirt bottom and the shirt top and the arms in between. Let's see how that works out. Let me bring this in a little right there. All right, so now let's manipulate the arms and see we're going under the top shirt. So we can move shirt top to hmm, below the hands. Hmm, that might that might work. Let's see what's going on here. I think what we've got is too much of a curve on this. So let's bring that over like that. We can move this arm. And you can see our rotation stays in the circle. The other circle's moving, but we don't care about that at the moment. I'm just seeing how all this works out. Let's just delete this. Hit T, delete this sleeve, and copy the other sleeve. So hit T, hit the edge, Control C to copy, go back to right sleeve, Control V to paste, and now we need to just put it where it belongs. So looks about right there. Oh, we need to bind the layer to this bone. So now we can rotate. There we go. And as you can see, it's lining up on the overlap of that part of the sleeve. What we want to do is make a patch for the sleeve. So let's go here we're going to patch and we're going to patch it to the shirt top. And okay. Then we're going to bring that patch layer down and place it where the bones come together close as we can here and then we're going to bind that to the shoulder bone here. Now we're going to do the same thing on the left sleeve. We're going to create a new patch and it's going to be to the shirt top and we tell it okay. Now we bring that layer down, stick it on the bones where they come together Zoom in to get fine detail and then bind to the shoulder. So now that patch will move with the shoulder. So no matter what we do with the character, that patch will be in the right position. So now I don't like the way this looks here now. So what we're going to do is going to go to the shirt top and we're going to just 
hit G to grab both of these points. Then T, and then I'm just gonna drag them, holding shift, drag them downward. And then I'm gonna hit C and reduce the curve on just those two points. Let's try bringing that out a little. Now what does it look like? I think that's better, yeah. Let's let's bring the point out here. Hit T to grab the point. And we're just gonna bring it right there. The arms are working good. Now we can turn the hairs back on. And uh, obviously this arm uh, should be in front of the body. We want to be able to move any of these parts around and still have whatever functional look we want. Um, we've got the arms and the sleeves working properly. And let's go ahead and convert this to layered sort. So we're going to go to depth sort and we're going to enable animated layer order and apply. And so now, just like with the feet, when we're doing an animation, we can move these parts however we need them to be. So if we need the arm and hand to be over the shirt top, we can simply remove the shirt top below those hands, just like that. So now the hand is above it. We can do this in animation, and we could set it up on a control bone as well so that it controls how this occurs. So like, oh, well, we need it on top of the sleeve too. Well, we simply bring this sleeve down to the shirt. And now the hand is on top of the sleeve. Once we do have the parts in the right orders, there we go. Now we can do what we need to do. So. That makes it where we can move these around during animation any way we like and overlap them to with each other, uh, interact, fold the arms, the whole bit. You can bring this hand out in front of the sleeve. Now we're going to move on to doing the emblem on the chest and on the shirt sleeves. The artist drew our character and then we made the shirt to match the character shirt that he created. Let's see. Patch to the top. There we go. And the sleeve. There. And there we go. So now we've got our patches in the right place with our sleeves for the overlap. And we can now start working on the next step. We want to create a new color if we don't have it already and we don't so this is going to be uh, the emblem and right now the emblem is white and in fact I think on all of our shirts it is white it did come out well that way but if we need we can change the color to any other color but for now we're going to go with white and as you can see the edges do fuzz out a bit on the character but on our emblems, they do not. So we're not going to fuzz it out except with our blur radius when we actually render the character. So we need the emblem and sleeves. Uh, so emblem, sleeves. And the stroke on that, yeah, we're gonna want it to be a transparent white don't like that black um, so we're going to change it back to white and we can go with a gray and then transparent partially transparent that works let's draw our emblem here we're going to make a triangle and just like this and hit T and I think we'll just keep it as uh, for the moment as a perfect triangle. Let's assume that it doesn't alter with the t-shirt for the super aware kid anyway. 
So we're going to copy that and paste it. And then using Alt, we can shrink the new one and it will stay centered. But as you can see, the bottom is coming up quite a bit more. So let's just use G to grab the bottom two points. Hit T and then holding shift, we can drag it straight down till we're on the line. And then using Alt, we can stretch it wider until both sides are in the right place. So there's our base triangle. Let's take a look without the superware kit. You've got to get rid of the center here. Um, all right, so what we want to do is make this a single object, but uh, let's get rid of the current coloring there. Now we can grab this as an object and holding shift, we can grab the hole and now we can create a using the emblem and sleeves we're going to create a new shape just like that so there is our superware emblem base let's render and see what this looks like yeah so the the emblem is going to not be blurred on top of the character i think that gives us the super effect you can't be super without some kind of super effect so since our character is simply super aware anybody can be super aware and that's literal so now we're going to make our exclamation point so we're just going to start with a circle and it's going to be part of the emblem so we're just going to stay here where we're at and we're just going to make our basic shape and size hit t move our points to where we want them use C to widen the base and the top like that and hit T and let's just move it so we're right in the center of it and let's bring it down a bit now we're working with a fuzzed out version because you know we asked him to fuzz it out but I just I think this will look better if we don't fuzz the circle so let's turn the kit off and now render we might fuzz it a little bit let's I bet we can let's try that let's go with that one Oh, that's it. That's perfect. All right. So now we've got our emblem, which basically is going to float out in front of the character shirt. And we need to put triangles and bands on the sleeves because they are uh, colored differently on our shirts and, and on the original too. So yeah, so like our blue shirt's got a black sleeve uh, bar coming down the sleeve and actually it goes underneath the stripe. So let's bring the Superwear kid. So actually on these, you can see it's a light blue, so or a highlighted blue, but it does go into darkness. So we're going to go with a, a dark stripe to match our actual shirt. We're going to create a new style. We're going to call this the... Um, trim our shirt trim that's it shirt trim and that way we'll be able to change the color anytime we like and let's instead of going black let's just go deep blue deep deep blue so deep navy blue there and the stroke we will leave it let's draw our basic stripe the right length hit T and then we're going to move it and rotate it and so we basically want to cover from here down to here let's let's set the bottom and then B to grab and 
we're just going to grab these top two, hit T, and then we're going to rotate them a bit and drag them down and around. So they're going to come up to the neck here. So we're probably going to have to do this in two different groupings, one for the neck and shoulder and one for the sleeve on our actual shirts. So now we're going to do A to add and bring these parts around to where we need them. And this one's going to come over to there. And there we've got our sleeve. Let's turn the super work kit off. And that is not good. Um, we may have to make a separate layer for the trim. Looks like we're going to have to so that it can go on top of the patch. So we're going to X and then we're just going to go above the patch, create a new vector. And it's going to be left trim and control V to paste inside the object there. So now it's on top. Let's make the border on that much thinner. Uh, a one works out. So now we can have shirt peeking out behind that stripe. That's fine. But and since we're putting the stripe above everything, we'll just go ahead and add points to bring it on over to the shoulder. So like this and like that. Hit C for curve. This one. Bring this one straight off of the shirt like that. That one over like that. So don't like it yet. Let's bring this one up to here. Hit that curve. And there we go. We're going to match the shirt there. This one at the single point. And I think we'll add another point here. And then another one here. Now, Our shirts don't have the white stripe on them. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm going to match the character to our shirt because that's what we've got. So I'm going to go back into the sleeves and remove the white stripes. I know they look good, but I think we should match our, our the shirts we were able to produce. And so Let's see. Top of the shirt. So, oh yeah, we'll just get rid of those white stripes because we've got this black here, or the dark line, and then we're going to put an emblem on that trim as well. So let's make a triangle out of our emblem for the sleeves and what we're going to do is we're going to leave out the fill we're going to only use the stroke and the stroke needs to be oh it's it's gray that's right let's well let's see what happens so we're going to make a little triangle right here um no we don't want to fill control z so we want auto fill off to make try. And it's gonna need to be white. That works. It gives us a bright white edge here, and then we end up with a triangle over here. So now we can alter this to match the uh, effect of the shirt being turned so that'll work 
So now we're going to duplicate the trim layer and just rename it to right. Get rid of the number and then we're going to flip it by the object. So grab the entire group, Let's, uh, grab the whole layer there like that, hit T and now we can flip it and drag with shift we drag it to the left and we can get it right on the old shoulder or the other shoulder so let's see about like that So now, let's see how that renders. Well, you really can't see the triangles on the sleeve. Let's make the thickness better now that it's the same or similar color. Let's go to three. And now then. Now we're still not going to see the triangles. But that's all right. We've got the one on the chest here. And I think that that's blurring just enough compared to the character. So that works out. And now what we want to do is put in the character, uh, the, the shadow for the emblem. So we've got the emblem. Let's just duplicate it. Oops, there. So then we'll call this emblem shadow. So now, because we're doing this a little differently, we're gonna drag these parts down for the shadow. So the shadow's gonna be right about like that. And turn off the kid so we can see what we're working with and the shadow will be underneath of the emblem like that so now we're going to get rid of all the shape here all right and we're going to go to shadow uh, we don't have shadow thought we had created it but not yet so we're gonna go new and we'll call it shadow and for shadow we just go with black and transparent so black and let's bring the transparency to 150 now that's 150 out of a possible 256 so there we go and then we want the edge to be the same and also 150 for the alpha and it should be completely black there all right so now we've got our shadow and we're going to make these shapes but we only want to do the stroke so we don't want any fill so we're going to grab that and we're going to go with just stroke and we create the shape and then we grab T to grab the other triangle and we're going to make a shape out of it and also it's going to be shadow and we create shape and then we do the circle Again, we're going to create a shape uh, we need to be on our color which is shadow and we create shape then T to grab the entire exclamation point there switch to our shadow color and again we're only going with the um, creating a shape 
and we're only going with the stroke we're not creating a fill and so there we go now we've got our shadow let's go ahead and render so it's a little bit dark okay so we're going to bring that down by the uh, intensity of the transparency so let's go and bring it down to 75 So now, render, and we're getting there, um, still a little dark, and let's go with a soft edge because it is shadow, 2, so instead of 11 we'll go 2, and OK, and then render. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Very soft shadow edge of the emblem. So now it appears as if the emblem is hovering out in front of the chest of the character, which is basically what Best Man was after, I think. When you look at this character, yes, we've got the emblems floating out in front with a shadow on the shirt from it being away from the shirt. To add a few points, it's, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that to show that the shadow is basically uh, being distorted by the shirt. So we're just going to do a little point here and there. Not too much. Just enough to say, oh, okay, it's, it's not, it is actually a shadow following the contours of the shirt, not just the contours of the object the uh, super wear emblem and there we go this may be overdoing it but let's let's take a look once it's oops I missed so now let's render Yeah, that looks better. That looks much better. So now we can move forward. But my bone layer should be here. Hmm. How can we do that? All right, so this is our bone layer, so we gotta keep it there. Let's bring the emblems inside of there. Now, let's bring Super Wear Kid. No, can't do that. So what I should have done, instead of uh, adding Super Wear Kid, I should have added, I should have changed the name back. So let's do this. Get rid of Super Wear Kid, the layer. Now, what we're going to do is add a new group of everything else. this together as a selection and that will be bottom and then this will be super wet kid now we can go in and take off the blur radius here and apply it to the body only. So we were at a six. And let's test that. There we go. 
So now I can attach the emblem to my bone layer. That's why I had to do that. So now we can make the emblem and the shadow for the emblem be bound by the bone to the uh, chest bone here. Hmm. All right, and we're going to need to do it by points anyway. So uh, B for bone and then I to grab points and we're gonna grab these lower points here to bind to that bone and then we'll bind the upper parts to the shoulder bone. So these other points will bind to the shoulder point and now when we move everything it should function. There we go. So we get a little distortion with the, the sleeve color but we can deal with that as an action for when we rotate the arm here. So now we can go to the other arm and do the same thing. So I'm going to bind by points. Hit B for bone. I to grab all these lower points and bind them. Then grab the shoulder bone, B for bone, and I and these top four points get bound. And there we go. So now we've got our character looking like we wanted to look. It's wearing our super aware shirt with the super aware emblem. When we move the body, the emblem moves with the character as do the sleeve trim. And we can manipulate our character quite well. And so I think that completes the look of our character. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to do here to change the look. So we now have our completed look for our character. Now we can start working on turning the parts, creating action bones. And that's what we'll do in our next video. You have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Remember to visit DangerAware.org and play our games, enter our contests, read our comics, and contribute. If you have anything to offer that you think would help us in our mission, please tell us. We can't do everything on our own. We need help. So help us change the paradigm of abuse awareness. You can visit our website and donate through PayPal. Or if you want to get something back, you can visit our merchandise store and purchase our notebook or one of our t-shirts or uh, any of our products concerning respect my uh, personal space. So you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.